Hello and welcome to the National Team's annual review show. I'm Tara Rushton. It's great to have your company this evening as Christmas inches closer and well, the finish line to 2020, we are nearly there. What a year it has been. I know that we've said that a fair few times, but gosh, we persisted. We did persist indeed. The National Team's persisted. Football persisted. Ladies and gents, we made it. We all deserve a big pat on the back. But amidst the chaos and the crisis that 2020 dished up, there were some pure moments of joy and some unbelievable achievements made that will shape this sport forever in this country. So we all have to be very proud of that as well. And tonight, over the next half an hour or so, I'll be joined by a couple of movers and shakers that made their mark on the year that was. Matilda Emily Gilmick, Socceroo Ryan Grant, Graham Arnold and Trevor Morgan as well. But before we get to that, let's take a look back on 2020 and the year that was by heading down to the golden sands of Bondi Beach because what makes you think of Christmas in Australia more than an Englishman, Simon Hill at Bondi Beach. Ah, socially distanced at Bondi Beach. Towards the year 2020 when the field stood still, when all the balls were stopped and it tested our will. No, this is not that kind of review. 2020, hey? Who saw that coming? Remember the Olympics? I mean, okay, sure, they didn't happen, but we qualified for them. And wriggle his yes. way through, Nick D'Agostino! With a massive goal for Australia! The 12-year wait is over. The Oli Roos return to the Olympic stage. Remember these scenes? Van Egmont! Yeah, we were excited. Just when Australia was crying out for a hero, they found one. And we're both heading, then maybe not, but then again heading to the 2020 Olympics in 2021. The A-League valiantly tried to push on, but even they were no match for our friend Corona. Was this the end for the A-League for 2020? Of course it wasn't, but more on that later. The Westfield W League, however, made it through to the end. Eight of our Westfield Matildas featured in that game. Seven lifted the trophy. Uh, are we doing a woo? <laughs> yeah, apologies for that, damn Karen. Uh, sorry, I meant COVID. So, they said we couldn't go out and play. So what do we do? We got involved in the Play at Home Challenge. Yeah, thousands of you all got involved from across the country, some a little bit better than others. Woo! Bet you can't guess what one of our favourite moments of 2020 was. The host country of the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023, Australia. Yeah! yeah, we had every intention of social distancing, but I mean, it's coming home, it's coming home. And a huge congratulations to the whole team involved in bringing the World Cup to Australia. Bring it on, 2023. Oh? Then came one of the biggest moments of the year, Eurovision. Oh, sorry, I meant the Euro takeover. Sam Kerr, Steph Catley, Caitlin Ford, Lydia Williams, Jenna McCormick, Amy Harrison, Kaya Simon, Avi Lewick, Emily Gilnick, Laura Brock, Alex Chidiak, Mary Fowler, Carly Rosbacken, Katrina Gorry, Emma Checker, Ellie Carpenter, Claire Polkinghorne, Tamika Yallop, Egan Micah, Alana Kennedy, Chloe Legazzo, Holly Razzo, Mackenzie Arnold, Emily Van Egmont, and Elise Kellen Knight, all signed with some of the biggest clubs in Europe. Eurovision. <laughs> Europe has a lot more to worry about than Australia taking over a singing contest. Remember when we were wondering what would happen to the A League? Well, not only was the comeback bigger than the setback, think 27 games in 34 days plus finals, but come the grand final, crowds were back as well. The game was end-to-end, -end, and at the end of it all came a very cheeky Ryan Grant goal to win it for Sydney FC. Up the mullet. On Ryan Grant's nipple, into the back of the net, Sydney staring at another championship. September, what a month. The Pararoos launched the undefeated challenge and raised almost $60,000. And just FYI, the target was 25,000. Absolutely outstanding. Woo. And the Westfield Matildas announce a new coach. Forget IKEA and meatballs, the best thing to come out of Sweden is Tony Gustafsson. He's got 10 years experience in women's football, 20 years as a coach, and he loves coffee. I wonder if he'll fit in. He's a two times World Cup winning and Olympic gold medal winning assistant coach as well. I think the team is in good hands, don't you? Thank you very much. 
Go get to the training pitch and get one day better, all of you. The new Nike kit was launched this year, made from completely sustainable materials. Technology, hey? Can't wait to see the Socceroos and the Westfield Matildas proudly wearing the new kit in 2021. I don't think I need to say that anymore, do I? But on a happier note, did you see the generations of Australia pieces to celebrate the new kit? Oh, look at that shit. Oh, that was nice. Dance with me, we're part of you. I'm sorry, that hour piece really got to me. Speaking of Almaville, some of our Socceroos made waves on the international scene with Awa scoring his first UEFA Champions League goal in just his fourth Champions League game. November was tough for all of football around the world. We couldn't look back on 2020 without remembering the great Diego Armando Maradona. He influenced football in ways few before him did and few after him will. To those that had the privilege of watching him play, it's a moment we will never forget. Rest in peace. Well, 2020 has certainly thrown us some curved footballs, get it? We've had downs, we've had ups, and as a football family, we came through it all together. And with Christmas around the corner, we're definitely coming out the other side. See ya, 2020. Happy 2021 to all, and to all, a very good night. Well, despite the absence of international matches for the Socceroos and Matildas, the fans were more engaged than ever. So thank you so much. Over 48 million views were hit up over the Socceroos and Matildas channels, which is a fantastic sign of what is to come in 2021. And there's a lot to look forward to. A couple of milestones on the horizon as well as the Socceroos celebrate their centenary in 2022. And what about the cherry on top of the cake? The Women's World Cup dual hosted between Australia and New Zealand in 2023. We want to know what you think and how we can become more engaged with the fans. The supporter surveys are now open. Just head to socceroos.com.au or matildas.com.au and let us know your thoughts. It is so, so important. Well, we snuck a camera in into Football Australia's HQ to uh, catch up with an interesting conversation between Socceroos boss Oli Roos boss Graham Arnold and technical director Trevor Morgan. So take a listen. They're going to talk about what they made of 2020 and what they're looking forward to in 2021 and what can only be described as a massive eye drop fail. Morning Arnie. Morning Trev. How are you? Mate, I'm great. You're you? great? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm looking forward to this chat. It's been a difficult year, but really interested in... Um, in the positives, because you're always on about positives. What are, the, what are the positives for you in 2020? Obviously been a tough year, but it's been a great year in terms of, you know, being able to reconnect with a lot of people, the family, and, and you know, a lot of times uh, through, the, through the past years, you've been travelling a, a lot and away a lot. Obviously on the work side, uh, the qualifying for the Olympics back in February, even though that seems like a eternity ago, it was, uh, was a great achievement by the boys. and. I'm uh, extremely looking forward to 2021. Tell us a little bit about your Northern uh, Territory visit. Mate, it was a great life experience. I, I went to, uh, to coach Indigenous kids up in uh, Alice Springs and from Alice Springs up to Tea Tree. You know, the, it was a real eye-opener for me to, to go and to do that in, in, in those areas. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was something that we did to help the game and help the kids and it was fantastic. Great experience, huh? You had any great experiences in yours? You yes, went up I, to Darwin. Yeah, so I went to Darwin uh, with with John Crawley. What was great was the the I guess the genuine appreciation from people when you come to visit and how well they treated us. Uh, and I got to do a session with a men's like a men's and women's team that represent um, Indigenous culture, but also Northern Territory area and like a state league level team. And mm. I think both sessions they gave absolutely everything and. It's probably the best feeling is, is actually being on the grass and working with people and um, and seeing them enjoy their football. So that was really great. And, you know, um, parting gift, uh, the Northern Territory um, CEO dropped myself and John Crawley in a tank with a, a, a 500 kilo crocodile oh, wow. to have a little swim around. Yes, yeah, that was You're nice. still here. Yeah, well, obviously, 
I would have thought I'd be the first one eating because I've got a bit, a bit more fat on me than John, but um, we both got out alive and uh, it's a good way to close a visit. But just like I say, a great opportunity for us to realise the people that aren't in the major cities, how much they love the game and how much they appreciate some contact. Oh, that's amazing. I put the strong error guard, right, sprayed it all over because I got told before, you know, the, the flies are massive, the mosquitoes are big and so I sprayed the error guard all over me and the error guard leaked from my forehead down into my eyes. And by the end of the training session, I couldn't see. My eyes were watering. <laughs> and while it was going on, I said to Benny Roach, Benny, mate, my eyes are killing me. I said, mate, can you go get me some eye drops? Well, he did. He went and got me eye drops, and then he left them in the car. <laughs> so well, by the time we got back to the car, I said, I said, did you get those eye drops? He said, yeah, they're just there, aren't you? I said, oh, you beauty. Well, it's 45 degree heat up there. The, the eye drops were probably you know, the roasting at about 50 degrees, and I dropped one in my eye. <laughs> it burnt my eyes completely. <laughs> uh, I'm really looking forward to next year. 2021 is going to be a fantastic year for <clears throat> Australian football overall. National teams, junior national teams, and Matildas, Olympics. So it's uh, uh, be an exciting time. I can't wait for the 27th to go and see, um, you know, the kickoff of the A-League and W-League. You haven't seen those, those top socceroos for a, quite a while now. Yeah, How good is it going to be to get in camp together? I think they're happy they're not seeing me, but uh, I, I actually do miss them. And uh, yeah. I'm in contact with them, you know, over the phone quite a bit. We'll have a, a Christmas Zoom meeting next week. Could be a great year for, obviously, all socceroos and Matildas fans with so much stuff going on, mm. games to play for. Yeah. Two, yeah. two teams at Olympic Games, first time in 12 years we've had men's and women's teams represent. Are you coming to watch? Oh, if TD? it's all right with you, if it's all right with you, I'll certainly love to come uh, and 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 be around the teams. And you know, I think all the work we're doing at the moment with with reinforcing the team identity, I think it's going to be great to have both teams there. And even even the fact that you and Mel spent time together in, in Northern Territory, that mm. connection between yeah. the national teams is really strong now. Mm. Um, and yeah, so. uh, you know, you've aged a bit in the last six Thanks, months. Thanks, mate. So how you enjoy doing the TD role? Look, it's it's a it's a real challenge. I think. Um, it's interesting that at the time when COVID came in, uh, I actually think it's a great time to be involved because um, we, we have to make change because of the financial structures and how everyone's life is and all the lessons we've learnt. But also we're choosing change and through the leadership and through of FFA and soon to be Football Australia. Mm. Um, and uh, obviously the 11 principles gives us something to come back to. Um, and uh, so in that way, I'm enjoying working with really, really top people. Your missus must be happy. Yeah, she is. Every time I'm away, yeah, that's right. I don't touch the TV remote. I don't interfere in anything. So, mate, uh, Christmas not far away. If there's one thing you you would uh, wish for for Christmas, what would that be, Arnie? To get back on an international aeroplane and fly overseas, and probably I have to say then I need the COVID jab. And you? What? what do you oh, want I'm just for thinking your wife's not going to be too worried that for Christmas <laughs> you want to get away from her. No. <laughs> Yeah, look, for me, uh, it's funny, I, I don't see football as work, so um, I'll probably be thinking about football on Christmas Day as much as I'm enjoying time with the family. But, uh, yeah, probably a nice meal and a glass of wine and then get on with it. Sounds good to me. Merry Christmas, Trev. Merry Christmas, mate. It's great to hear from Arnie and Trevor there. Well, a big year as a lead-up to Qatar 2022. The World Cup continues qualification in March and one man bound to make his impact and have a fair amount of one is Ryan Grant. And despite a challenging year, what a belter he had in 2020. Picking out Ryan Grant, chesting at home. The kid from Canadra with the smart at the back post. He scored another grand final goal for Sydney FC. How clever is that finish? Using his head to use his chest to finally beat Tom Glover. Sydney FC set another new benchmark. They're the first five-time champions in Australian football history. Well, 2020 didn't work out to be so shabby for that man right there. Ryan Grant, the man, the mullet, scoring the A-League Grand Final winning goal off his peck, no less. And he joins us live right now from hotel quarantine, just back from Doha. And you're sitting in your room there. I don't know what you're doing with yourself. Rhino, how are you surviving? Uh, yeah, I'm not going too bad, to be honest. Um, yeah, probably could be a little bit more 
uh, constructive with things to do around the hotel room. But um, yeah, at the minute we're still training on a daily basis, uh, which makes a big difference, getting a bit of fresh air and obviously a bit of sun uh, and moving the legs and having a bit of fun. So um, yeah, as bad as it, it could be, um, it's not that bad. Does that mean that you're the most excited you've ever been in your whole entire life to train because you actually get to get outside and have some human interaction and interpersonal contact and connection with your teammates? Yeah, you'd think that'd be the case. Um, <laughs> but obviously, you have your days. Uh, sometimes, obviously, being cooped up, you're sort of uh, getting a bit of a rut and you sort of just want to lay around. But no, nah, in saying that, um, we've been very lucky to be able to be allowed to get out and train. So we are definitely making the most of it. We're having a few double sessions, which... Usually the boys aren't too pleased about, but um, in this circumstance, we're, we're happy to get out and, and do the doubles and uh, be running around. Can you give us some insight into what this past five and a half, six weeks has been like playing an Asian Champions League campaign, living in a hub? You must be a pro at having a COVID test by now. I mean, that seems weird to say in itself, but what was the experience like? Uh, yeah, the experience itself was okay. I didn't mind the, the format of uh, the Champions League like that. It's, we're obviously used to travelling midweek and then backing up again and playing on the weekend. Um, so to have it in that sort of format was a little bit different for us and, and pretty interesting. And I think obviously we didn't get the results we wanted, um, but you could see that we played really well and I think that had something to do with it. Um, but again, we were in a bit of a hub and sort of locked down to a hotel um, over in Qatar, which to be fair, we got to get around the hotel and have team rooms, which we don't have here in Sydney. But um, So that made a little bit of difference. We all got to mingle and, and have a good time. But uh, back here, it's a little bit different. But, um, yeah, it wasn't too bad over there. So what was the wash-up after you went in goals against Shanghai SIPG? Uh, how did that conversation go down? Um, it did trend on social media. A lot of people were surprised. I know it was sort of common knowledge around uh, the boys and the coaching staff that if something ever happened to one of our keepers that um, I'd be the first uh, to go in there and uh, I didn't even have to put my hand up. Bimby knew that I was uh, more than keen and eager to get in there. But last year, we, me and Alfie uh, always jumped in the net at training and, and tried to show off who would be fourth choice. And um, unfortunately for him, he, he's left now and um, I was obviously ahead of him anyway, but I got to show him there that, that I was worth my spot and he was quick to give me a text and say I took his dream, but um, yeah, it was always going to be me and um, I was just hoping to. So what did the boys say about it? You said that you had the team rooms, it was a little bit different over in Doha. What was the chat uh, post that, that, that match in particular? Yeah, like they were just having a bit of a laugh like everyone was on, on social media, like you said. Um, but again, they knew that I wanted to do it. And, um, I think obviously it came out that now I've played in every single position for Sydney FC, which I suppose might happen when you've been at the club for um, 12 or 13 years. So it's always going to be the case. But um, yeah, it's sort of a, a cool little thing to tick off uh, the bucket list. <laughs> yeah, on one of the biggest stages as well. You know, don't worry about that one. What was it like coming up against your Stockaroos teammate, Aaron Moy? Yeah, obviously, I think it was good to see him. Uh, it would have been nice for him, I think, to see some friendly faces and, and have a chat. We did get to bump into him. Um, I think he was on the way to a presser at the, at the uh, uh, stadium when we were having a look at it. Um, and we got uh, 15 minutes or so to have a chat, and I think it was nice for him and for us just to catch up and say good day. Um, obviously, playing against him is, is always difficult, but, um, yeah, it was just good to see him, and um, he seems to be doing really, really well. And talking about this year overall, I know 2020, people were calling it Glen 20, but for you, scoring the winning goal in the A-League Grand Final, third championship with Sydney FC, third premiership with Joe Master medalist as well. You mentioned it there, you've been with this club for such a long time since you were 17 years old. When you reflect back on the year that was, how do you sum it up? Yeah, it's a great question. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> Yeah, on a personal level, uh, it was um, pretty successful, I suppose. And as a club, it was uh, very pers uh, very uh, successful. But I think outside life, where everything was a little bit difficult and um, such a change, and I think everyone uh, went through a difficult time. And um, But at the same time, we're very fortunate to sort of keep our jobs and still be doing what we, we love to do. And um, the league, obviously, it did have a break, but it got back on track and we got to finish it. So 
it's really hard not to, to see the positives. I think a lot, a lot of other people have had a, a lot of worse things happen and mm. have been worse off. So um, we're pretty fortunate to, to sort of end up where we did. But um, yeah, on a personal level, like I said, it was, it's been a fantastic year. And talking about that, you must feel like it's been, does it feel like it's been a longer year? Do you kind of look at it and go, wow, we've been playing so much football considering when the lockdown happened here in Sydney, it actually feels like such a long time ago. Then the competition resumed, you're playing fixtures every three to four days and now you've gone over to Doha and now you're back and the league's about to start again. It's a different situation for everyone, different schedule. Yeah, it seems a little bit rushed, I suppose, like uh, very cramped. We, we obviously got a few weeks off after then, um, before coming back and, and getting ready for uh, the Champions League. But um, even when that was all happening, we weren't 100% sure if it was going to go ahead and what date we are leaving and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, you're sort of always expecting, but at the same time, you thought it might not come through. So um, it was a weird situation and um, even the break during the year for the, for the COVID um, was strange. Uh, you, people sort of think, oh, you had a bit of time off, but obviously we were in lockdown and we weren't able to do what you'd normally do with a bit of time off, so it, it's not exactly the same. Um, but, yeah, it seems like it's it's been a long year and, um, yeah, the, the next season's already around the corner. I think we're two weeks away or ten days or something like that, so by the time we're out of here, we get a, a few days off and um, to see our families and, and friends again and, and partners, obviously, and then uh, straight back into it. What's the plan? So you bust out of there on Saturday afternoon. Is there an escape plan? And what, what's on the cards for Christmas? Uh, yeah, everyone's counting down the days and the hours. Don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> as soon as the Santiago comes, everyone will be trying to be the first one out the door. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I've got my family Christmas um, on my dad's side on the, on the Sunday. So I'm racing straight back to Bathurst. Uh, on the Saturday evening um, and obviously have that and then back on Monday uh, to get back into training and then we have actually get uh, Christmas Day off which is uh, really nice it doesn't always work out that way so uh, we've got that this year and uh, I'm just spending that with my uh, partner and, and her sister and, and her sister's boyfriend and a few of our friends actually up here in Sydney so we're planning on getting down to the beach. And I've heard you're a, a fantastic chef is turkey on the menu are you are you in the kitchen Rhino? Uh, definitely not. I'll, I'll jump on the Barbie. Um, <laughs> anyone wants anything on the Barbie, but uh... that'll be interesting to see how that goes. Looking ahead quickly, I've got to ask you before I let you go. And thanks so much for your time. Uh, March 2021 Socceroos World Cup qualifiers. They continue that journey to Qatar. I mean, it must feel like such a long time ago since you last donned the green and gold of the Socceroos jersey. But I'm sure it's something that you're probably keeping firmly in the back of your mind, looking ahead to what could happen and some positivity around next year. Yeah, definitely. It's obviously, like you said, been a long time since uh, there's been an international game. So uh, it's always nice to go away and represent your country. And I suppose you don't really um, realise how lucky you are to do that and how fun it is to get away and, and what a great experience it is when it sort of gets taken away. So, yeah, really looking forward to that um, if I'm part of that and I uh, would obviously love to be, but we'll have to see what happens. But, um, yeah, fingers crossed I'm part of that going forward and, and continue to play for the, for the Socceroos. Lastly, what's on the Chrissy list? Um, I think I need a new wetsuit, actually. Uh, just a wetty top um, for the summer. So hopefully uh, my girlfriend sees this. <laughs> Thursday night, yeah, okay. I think I think hopefully we can we can make that happen. Trust though, uh, a new wedding for Ryan Grant, of course. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Ryan. I hope you have a fantastic Christmas, and we'll see you back on the pitch very very soon. No worries. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Yeah, I hope you can break out of that quarantine on Saturday afternoon. It won't be very long now, but the national team players, until they have the ball back on the pitch, jingling those balls all over the pitch, and we just can't wait for it. Hey everyone, check out this new ball I got. What's this? Merry Christmas from our football family to yours. Feliz Navidad. Buon Natale. Kronja Pola. Hugs Merry Christmas. 
Well, to someone who's going to be juggling the ball a lot closer to home back in Brisbane is Emily Gilnick, who is joining us very, very shortly. I bumped into Em a couple of times throughout the year, of course, as we were bidding to host the Women's World Cup in 2023. Luckily, we did win it. And uh, she did decide to turn the tables on me a little bit when she took control of the camera. OK, we're on. Yeah, you're here live with uh, Emily Gilnick, Staying Alive Saba. Got the girls here. Girls, just uh, give the cam away. Oh. I'm on the cam for today. How are you feeling about this day, dolls? Fantastic. Just got to get the perfect shot, you know? We just like to say cheers to the World Cup Live on Fox. <laughs> maybe or maybe not. I'm with the star of the show over oh, here. Oh, no, yeah. come on, come on. All right, so ladies, now you're being interviewed. How do you feel about today's lunch? Oh, I'm feeling good. There's barramundi on the menu. I'm Ooh. a big fan of fish. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, next question. <laughs> it's actually quite hard interviewing, isn't Sorry. it? Yeah, I'd probably have to get some better chat for myself, but Barramundi, someone who can have some Barramundi on the Barbie because she is back home, is Matilda Emily Gilnick, who joins us right now. Em, so great to have you joining us. You're back home. Welcome back. It must feel pretty good to be back in Brizzy. It honestly feels amazing. And the second I hear barbecue, that just makes me even <laughs> happier. So sunshine barbecue. Obviously, I've been in quarantine lockdown for two weeks so those things sound like Christmas to me so yeah it's good to be back. Christmas is around the corner I think uh, you're at your mum's house I believe so you're already doing yeah. the Bris Vegas tour of duty. Yeah. yeah of course I've been I've been babysitting the little ones you know having coffees with mum and I've just you know really ticked all the boxes and who I haven't seen for such a long time so I'm just narrowing that down and then I'm back in full swing with Raw. So you're back at home. I know you're speaking about Brisbane Raw, who you're playing with in the upcoming W League season, but Sweden in your time yeah. over there with Vitwa, how did it go? Finished about fifth on the table in the end, went through a good run of 12 games mm -hmm. undefeated, but you had a pretty good season, pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, for me, in terms of, you know, as a striker feeling successful, um, I really did feel like I had a pretty consistent season over there, banged in a few goals and set up a couple. And to be honest, we just had such a great team culture and, and great players and great people. And we had a what I feel was quite a successful season, uh, you know, considering that we had a bit of a bad run at the start when there were a few players down. But once the foreigners came in and kind of all... And uh, now we really, we really played some good football. So we're on a race to the top three. We didn't quite make it, but to me, in terms of individual and, and as a group, I felt we were, we were pretty successful. So it's good for me. I feel like you're being really humble and playing that down a little bit because you did score a cheeky hat no. trick as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been a while since I've had a hattie. So that was really nice. <laughs> but look, I've got the most selfless players out there and they just made my job pretty easy. And it was, yeah, it was pretty nice to be putting balls in the back of the net, it's felt like quite a long time for me. So that was nice. That's awesome. It sounds like Sweden was a great place for you to go. And what about the level of competition yeah. overall and playing in a bit of a bubble? How was that? Yeah, well, you know, if anyone knows Sweden but was watching the news worldwide, they're kind of in their own world, you know, in terms of COVID, it was pretty a normal life over there. Not too many restrictions. So you know, it was just nice to be back playing, playing football and the league itself is extremely strong now that I've, I've played in another, uh, other Scandinavian countries. You know, without comparing it to W League, it's definitely up there, if not um, even stronger. So I know for sure that I put myself in the in best, best environment possible to develop, um, you know, in terms of what's coming up with national teams. So it was a really good decision for me overall, I think. Talking about the national team, you touched on them there, the Matildas, Olympic qualifiers. It must yeah. feel like it was over a year ago, even though it was 2020, okay. that it happened. Uh, yeah. And they were qualifiers that nearly didn't end up happening, of course, being hosted yeah. here at home, which is fantastic. Yeah. What are your, I guess, fond memories from that time? And then looking ahead, what was it like finding out that the Olympics would be postponed to 2021? Yeah, look, I feel it's it's hard to put it really into words, but there's just been so much happening. And I think that obviously qualifying is the best feeling ever. You know, you've got that security, you know you're playing. But then to have the step back of, you know, really preparing for that world stage and then for it to be postponed. But look, I think, you know, things happen in the world and we've just had to adapt. You know, we had a lot of good a lot of good game time together and a lot of um, 
you know, time with the team. So I felt like we we're really well prepared. But once again, you know, things change and now we just have to re-prepare. And obviously with COVID, you know, taking a big hit, it's, it's not made us able to come together as a group for the last few camps. So there is a little bit of that, um, that stress there in terms of familiarity with the team again. But I know once we get back together, the ball will start rolling and we'll just, you know, be full steam ahead. And I hope that, you know, we do have a fair preparation so we can put our best foot forward when Olympics does come and hopefully there's no other postponement. You're going to have a bit of familiarity when we look at your Brisbane Raw squad. You've got a fair few yeah. of your Matildas teammates. It's, yeah. it's like going back to the originals, yeah. isn't it? That must be a pretty comforting yeah. feeling. You, you're back at home, you get to spend Christmas at home and, and familiar faces all around you. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, you know, over 10 years ago now when I was a baby and I had, you know, KK, Tamika <laughs> Butt, which is now Yellup, Kim Carroll, Katrina Gorey. You know, we all grew up playing together for a solid eight years and have been in the national team together. So, you know, we're, we're definitely familiar. And I think that that's one good thing about coming back to W League is we have we have got those players around me and we're around each other. So we, you know, keep those standards high and expect expect the best from each other. And yeah, I guess that gives us a bit of advantage. At least we get to play some football together. So, yeah, it is good to see the old girls back and everyone back in orange. And uh, yeah, it feels like old times already, like I never left. Was it a difficult decision to make him to head back to Brisbane? I guess coming home was always a great thing. But how did all of the pieces fall into place? Yeah, look, originally I had, I've had some offers over in Europe and, you know, I've just kind of gone with my gut feeling on this one, as I did with Sweden. I never planned to be in Sweden. And when I had the gut feeling to go there, it just brought me back some happiness and I had a good about it and I had a successful season. So I just kind of wanted to fit, follow that gut feeling and head back home and be in an environment that makes me happy and hopefully that, you know, gives me, you know, the, the vibes to play good football and it's just really about consistency for me. So it was a tough decision to come back home because obviously being in Europe is, is really good in terms of development, but I'll get the opportunity to go back. So I just think right now for me individually in the build-up, this is what was best for me. What are you most looking forward to in 2021? <sighs> yeah, obviously no restrictions um, <laughs> anymore. You know, no more quarantines, hopefully. <laughs> you know, just, just, being, just being back you know, into a routine with national team camps, preparation for, for big events and big things. And, you know, just obviously, I mean, I don't know right now what my 2020 looks, 2021 looks like, but I'm sure it's just going to be filled with football. I'm sure I'm going to be back overseas in Europe and, you know, I just want the world to be, you know, happy and healthy and back to normal again. And that, that, would, that would be enough for me. Yeah, it sounds like a pretty good shout. I know a lot of fans would love to see you back in the yeah. green and gold, uh, playing in the Olympic tournament, which will be happening in 2021. Yeah. What's your take? New coach, Ante, got you through qualification and it's yeah. Tony that's going to take mm -hmm. you through to the Olympics. What, what's your read and what, what are your first impressions of Tony Gustafsson? Yeah, obviously, I have much respect for Ante. He was a great coach and he, he did a good job with us. And, you know... Now, it's, I don't know, it's a weird coincidence, but playing in Sweden, you know, I love the Scandinavian, and I've heard a lot about him. He's obviously got a good, great footballing background in terms of victory and success. Um, some of my teammates have actually been coached by him, so I've only heard great things. So it's like a fresh slate for everyone, and I just think it's, you know, it's, it's really good for us moving forward. So I'm excited to, to meet him, to see what he's about, and to get on his page as soon as possible and just hit the ground running. So, um, yeah, I can't Thank complain you very much. He's got that Scandinavian we'll culture about him. I think that really suits you. us, so I'm really looking forward to meeting him. And I guess lots of things, not just the Olympics to look forward to and you getting to work and meet Tony and I guess yeah. you've got that familiarity now with spending so much time over in Sweden too. But a Women's World Cup in 2023 at home, yeah, a nice little carrot at the end. Yeah. Who would have ever predicted that this was going to be a part of our, you know, you have one career and it's miraculously involved in your pathway. So I just think what an unbelievable opportunity. I can't even explain how prestigious. Yeah, so it's got everything to look forward to and the opportunity of a lifetime to play green and gold in front of friends, family and fans and, you know, a great way to put Australian football on the map. So I'm just so excited and what a big three years it's going to be. Huge few years, but first off, you've got Christmas to celebrate. Uh, where's Christmas this year? Are you on the barbie? Are you on uh, salads or are you preparing the turkey? How's it going down in the Gilnick household? 
Yeah, the Gilner Castle, very loud. We're, we're all about getting in the final word. The barbecue will be cranking, you know, some, some cold drinks on ice and it will just be good vibes and a good laugh. And, you know, it's be, been a long time since I've been around kind of everyone in my extended family and friends. So, you know, I'm just looking forward to it because I really didn't expect to be home and here I am. So I'm just going to make the most of the opportunity for sure. Well, enjoy it. Auntie M is back on deck looking after the niece yes. and nephew. Have a wonderful Christmas, yeah. gorgeous woman. And we can't wait to see you back on the pitch yeah. representing Brisbane Raw. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Always nice to talk to you, Tara. Yeah, no barramundi next time. We might go for the chicken yeah, instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unless I'm cooking. <laughs> I'll, on the barbie good though. <laughs> I'll take up the offer. We can come into Brisbane. The, the borders are open, yeah. so that's a good one. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll put your name down. I <laughs> oh, see. I even need to put my name down at M's house. That's how yeah, popular there's, it is. There's quite a list. There's, there's quite a lineup for the old barbecue at oh. the Kilnicks. Yeah, so we'll put you down, but you're already. Great. Looking forward to it. Maybe no yeah. flights because of the baby. But anyway, M, thanks so much. Merry Christmas. <laughs> see you soon. Appreciate it. Merry Christmas. See you soon. And that is all we have time for here this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you also to the fans who have stuck through the national teams through thick and thin. It has been a very difficult 2020. Also, a big thank you to all of our commercial partners and as well. What a 2020 it has been, but so much to look forward to in 2021. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And however you celebrate this festive season, stay safe, have a great one, and I'll see you on the pitch. <laughs>